Disclaimer. The code you will see here is not efficient and I won't advise someone to do a game like this. It's more a challenge than a real implementation. However, it's a great opportunity to skim over several tools of Unity or just see a game created in few minutes. Finally, this video was inspired by making a game with 10 lines of code only by Jonas Tyroller. This being said, let's see what we can do with less than 40 lines of code using Unity. The game is an atmospheric horror kind. You control a poor soul in a graveyard with a simple goal, survive. You want to avoid touching a skeleton by moving right or left. The tricky part is that you can't always move. Sometimes you have a window to choose between moving right, left or being still. It's all about the nerves and a bit of luck. <laughs> ok, how we can do that without writing a ton of code? The first step is to prepare the game with some Unity tools already coded for us. First, from an empty scene, I create the level with a Unity tiling tool. For the moment, all is black, because I use a material which interacts with light, so let's turn the light on by simply adding a light in the scene. The second step is to create one character. Let's start by the hero, by creating a game object with a component renderer, which is a Unity class which handles the render for us. Then I add an animator component to animate the renderer. Create two animations, idle and run for the hero, and an animator controller to control which animation to play depending of a value. You can call it whatever you want. For me this value fxdir will represent the direction of the character. Above zero we move right, below zero we move left, and near zero we consider we don't move. With that in mind, I configure the transitions between the two states to add the good animation at the right time. Cool? Cool, cool, cool. Ok, here we have the visuals, but no physics. No problem, physics is already coded in Unity, so let's just add some components. Rigid Body 2D to be considered in the physics, and Collider 2D to have a simple representation in space to simplify the calculations. Ok, you don't do it, but be kind with your computer, mm, ok? The ground and the walls also need their own physics representation or the character will drift away alone in space. Again and again, we use a Unity component to automatically make a physics boundary from the tiles. To finish with the physics, we need to configure some layers to tell to the physics system what can collide with what, and set the appropriate ones to our objects. Now let's just create the enemy, a skeleton, same as the hero but with different sprites. We need to create two other animations and we can't use directly the controller used previously because the animations of the hero are associated to it. Instead we use a controller overrider with a reference of the previous animator controller. Basically it will do the same as the hero but with other animations. After that I create quickly another game object with only visual, no physics, to warn the player about enemy spawn. I use a renderer, an animator with one state and one basic animation. Finally, I create some UI to notify the player if the game is over or if he survived and give him the opportunity to retry or quit the game. How? You know the drill now, by using some game objects with Unity components such as TextMesh Pro for the text, panel for the background and buttons for uh, the buttons. At this point the project is configured and we didn't write a simple line of code. Nice! Sir. Just before coding, let's plan just a bit to understand what we have exactly to code. We need a game manager to handle the phases of the game, spawn the skeletons, game over, win, reset the game and quit. And we also need to handle the behavior of the characters. I will model it by two different components, a controller one which defines a direction to move, basically is a brain, and a move component to translate this direction in a position and animation in the game space, thus the body. Time to code. I start with the move component, I use two methods from MonoBehavior, the base class from which every Unity script derives. First, fixed update, which is called every update of the physics system. I use it to add force to the physics component of the object, depending of two variables, a speed and a horizontal direction. 
second update which is called every frame to modify the variable of the animator fx dear we saw it's crazy to make the animator choose a good animation state idle or run I also changed the scale of the child object with the renderer to flip the image in the direction of the motion. I add a serialize field attribute front of the speed and horizontal direction variable declaration to be able to modify those values manually directly from the interface of Unity. Thanks to that I can test and for example simulate the modification of the direction. But the direction has to be defined by code. The character will use the inputs and the skeletons a stupid AI brain. To finish the move component without bothering about their respective implementation, I create an interface with the method that both controller will need to contain, get x direction, and use the one that will be attached to my game object to get the x direction every frame. For the controller, let's start with the easy one, the stupid AI brain. I have to implement the previous interface in order to be used by the move component. The method will simply return a random value between minus 1, 0 and 1. For the human boy, I will simply return a variable xdir, which will be set by a public method with whatever name you want. I call it mine onMove. And onMove has this special argument because it is intended to be a listener at the event when the player push move button of a Unity component called player input that I add to the hero. And player input is nice, really nice because it handles the input for me. Although this component needs a bit of additional configuration, but I won't go in detail, there are tons of tuto about it. We can see here the first results. Okay, I can move perfectly, but the skeleton is completely crazy. It's because it gets a new direction every frame. To fix this issue, I add in the move class a condition to be able to change the direction only every 1.5 seconds. It's also a way to have the controller of the player a bit inconsistent to simulate the figure of the character. Finally, let's program the phases of the game through the game manager. To begin, I declare some input objects I will need, the worn object we saw previously, and the enemies. The reference is done manually through the Unity interface by simply drag the objects I want to fill those variables with. I declare also some Unity events representing some phases of the game. Why? To write less code, of course. You will understand why after. The next step is to encapsulate the starting phase of the game in a method from MonoBehavior, which is named Start, called at the first frame of the program. I declare it public to be able to call it from the button to retry, but we will see that later. For this phase, I first specify that the start event is happening. Then I deactivate all the skeletons, and finally I start a coroutine named Spawn Skeletons. In Unity, a coroutine is a method that can pause its execution and is thus perfect to spawn periodically some skeletons. Inside it, for each skeleton of our list, I define a random position inside the level and place our one object at this position. Then we specify that the one event is happening, wait 3 seconds, spawn a skeleton and wait 10 seconds before doing the same for the next one. At the end, we specify that the win event is happening, cause I didn't mention it, but if you are alive when all the skeletons are spawned, you win of course. To finish with the game manager, we define two public methods, one to quit the game, which will be called by the button to quit, and one to handle the game over. Handling game over is easy, we only specify that the game over event is occurring, and we stop all coroutine to stop the spawn of skeletons. Because the principle of the game is to avoid touching the skeletons, I trigger this function in the component specific to the player, in the human controller. More precisely inside onCollisionEnter2D, a method from the MonoBehavior class, which is called when an incoming collider makes contact with the object. If the game object incoming has a tag bot, we find the object of type GameManager and call the GameOver function. And that's it. No more code, I promise. To complete the game, from the Unity interface, I go on the manager and specify what should happen on the different events, enable some canvas or activate the one object. 
Same process for the buttons. Unity used the same concept of events in this pre-built component. I select for the on-click event, start method of the game manager for the retry button and quit game for the quit one. Okay, the game is working, but let's add some details to make it nice to play. But quickly, I'm sure that 80% of the people already left. I create some game objects with audio source component configured with some audio clips found on zapsplat.com. I trigger them exactly as before by using the event. Powerful, doesn't it? Come on, I don't have any voice now. I add some background by using the tiling tool and some trees. Use some clouds that I configure a bit transparent to make some kind of fog. Add some text in the background to explain the game. I use the cinemation tool to add some noise to the camera to give a bit of horror touch. And the cherry at the top is to use some post-processing effects like a vignette or color saturation. And voila, you have a nice little game made with less than 40 lines of code in what, 20 minutes? I don't know, I'm talking for so long now. Okay, okay, it needs some knowledge about the tools of the game engine, but it shows how it can be powerful, don't you think? Congrats if you did it with me, hope you enjoyed. I put a link of the game in the description for those who want to try it. It took me some time and effort to do this video, so if you want to support my work, don't hesitate to check the game I'm currently developing. All the graphical assets were taken from it, the links are below. Quickly, it's a local multiplayer arena game on Steam in which your lives are some mercenaries you hired. Really fun for geek nights with friends. So share, like it and all it uh, if you can. Uh, I don't know why I'm too tired now. That being said, have a nice day. See you. It's a nightmare to record how people can do that.